Have you ever wondered about fish migration patterns and what water temperatures that they're biting at? Well, keep watching this video. Thanks for tuning into this video. My name is Kathy Sanders. I'm a beach fishing guide here in Northeast Florida, and I have been researching and studying this very topic for a while. Recently, one of our viewers left a little comment on one of our videos and said, can you do a video about migration patterns? And so that got me thinking, not only should we talk about migration patterns, but we should also be talking about water temperatures because the migration pattern is gonna be directly affected by the water temperature. Not only are we gonna hit these topics, but we're also going to give you a breakdown month by month which fish you should be targeting. They're going to be most prevalent typically in those months. And keep watching all the way to the end because we're going to talk about storms and hurricanes and how those type of weather systems are going to affect fishing and the fish bite. So keep watching. Just a couple of quick notes before we get into this video. We have migratory and resident fish. So for instance, whiting we can catch year round, but there's different seasons and different water temperatures where they're more prevalent. So these fish tend to bite more at the water temperatures that we're talking about, and that might be true for other areas as well. So if you're not in Northeast Florida, this video can also teach you some things about fish in your area. And the last little note that drastic conditions in other areas may cause fish not to be present when they're normally present. We'll get into that at the end of the video. So the common fish that I'm gonna talk about right now are pompano, whiting, bluefish, black drum, redfish, and sea trout. And then I have a couple of bonus fish that you may catch in this area, but it's not gonna be all the time. First on the list, we're gonna talk about pompano, the fish that everybody is chasing up and down the beach. Pompano are migrational fish, most of all. There are resident pompano. We've been catching them through the summer. There's other people that have been catching them, but the big schools of pompano are migrational. They're gonna go up in the spring into the, the cooler waters, and they're gonna come back down in the fall. Preferred water temperatures is 65 to 75 degrees, 66 to 72, that's the peak water temperature. I use an apple called surf line and even the free version you can see five days out you can see water temperatures you can save your favorite beaches i use it all the time and it's going to be more accurate than the other fishing apps because it's made for the beach it's made for surfers so it's going to show you accurate tides and water conditions there might be better ones out there but that's been the best thing for me to use check your water temperatures before you're going out to the beach and see if it's the right temperature for the fish that you're targeting bait preferences for pompano they're going to be biting on sand fleas they're going to be biting on shrimp we use a lot of fish Gum. They're also going to be hitting on clams and uh, small jigs. If you know how to jig with the pompano jigs with the little teasers on it, you can catch them that way too. From the beach, we're using our set rigs, usually a pompano rigs. So you can check out our pompano rigs that we sell in our store. Get packed up for fall, get packed up for spring, whichever season that you're getting ready to go into. Uh, we've got rigs that you can use. We got our float rigs that I make. And just one little side note here, we put the floats on the hooks because in underwater footage, and I'll put a clip of it right here while I'm talking, you're going to see the the pompano are sucking in the floats before they suck in the hooks in the bait typically. So we've got them on the hooks right there for you. You can go check out our store. Peak months for pompano are going to be March to June and then September through November. If the water temperature is still like 85 degrees in September, then it might be a little bit later when they come back through. Fish cannot regulate their own body temperature like we can. We sweat and cool ourselves down. Mammals can do that. Fish cannot do that. They have to go where they are comfortable so they just migrate and they go where the water is the temperature that they're most comfortable with Second on the list is whiting. They're gonna be present year round, but you're gonna see more of them in the cooler months and when the water temperature is between 63 to 68, somewhere in there. I mean, you're gonna catch them anywhere between 60 all the way through 85 degrees. The months that we have seen the most is gonna be October through April when you're gonna see the most whiting caught. They're gonna be biting on shrimp and sand fleas and cut bait. I, I don't use a lot of cut bait to catch whiting, but I have caught them on cut mullet. I'm typically catching them on either shrimp, either the salted shrimp I make, fresh dead shrimp, or sand fleas. And uh, you're just gonna have to try them all out because from one day to the next, their taste buds change. So you're gonna have to figure out what they want that day. Next up on the list is bluefish. And so bluefish are also migratory. We have not caught hardly any bluefish over the last few months. They like those cooler water temperatures and we've had 85 degrees. So when it comes to bluefish, fall is gonna give you the much better bite because you also have the mullet running in the surf. You're gonna start seeing them around even 55 degrees through about 73 
but the peak water temperature that you're gonna find them the most at is between 65 and 73 degrees. So with bluefish, they're very predatory fish. They're gonna go for a cut mullet, cut bait. If you're throwing spoons, they love to chase their bait. So that's another way that you can catch them too on artificial spoons. The peak months for bluefish are gonna be April through June, and then also October through December. And this last year, we had those big bluefish coming down from the north all year long. We were catching them uh, 30 to 35 or bigger inch bluefish. Don't know if it's gonna be like that this next year. We'll find out. The next fish on our list is black drum. You're gonna be able to catch black drum here in Northeast Florida year round. And there's a little peak in the springtime when they're spawning that you may catch even more of them because they're more prevalent and more active. You're gonna find black drum between 61 and 73 degrees water temperature, but the peak water temperature that you're gonna find them at is 67 to 73. There's always exceptions. We've been catching a bunch of black drum, 16, 17 inch black drum, in this warmer water temperatures between 80 to 85 degrees. So there are exceptions, there are residential ones, and they are here all the time. Bait, you're gonna be using shrimp or crabs or clams. When we were catching them recently, I'm pretty sure that it was salted shrimp we were using or sand fleas tipped with some uh, fish gum. In the spring between February and April, there may be a peak of catching them even more because of that spawning season. The next fish on our list is redfish. Now redfish are here year round. You can pretty much catch them anytime, but they're gonna be more abundant in the fall months during their spawning season. Water temperatures for redfish is gonna be between 62 degrees and 75 degrees. I do believe the last one that we caught, it was probably about 80, 81 degrees. So of course there's gonna be exceptions to that. The peak temperatures are gonna be between 68 and 75 degrees. So in the fall when the mullets start running in the surf and we've actually started to see them already. I had my camera out, my go fish cam, a few days ago and we were seeing a small school of mullet already in the surf. So they are starting to come back in the surf and this is just the beginning of August. Bait preferences for redfish, I get a lot of them on sand fleas. They love the crabs, they love the shrimp and mullet, especially mullet. I know people who are targeting the big bulls, they'll throw a whiting head out. But you're gonna want to upgrade your tackle if you're gonna be targeting those bull redfish because they will snap the line if you're using light tackle. So like I said, redfish are here year round, but their peak months are gonna be September through November. And I would say even into December. Um, last year we were catching them into December and it's all dependent on the water temperatures. Before we get into our three bonus fish, we're gonna talk about speckled sea trout or spotted sea trout, whichever one you wanna call it. So for speckled sea trout, you're gonna be able to find them year round and these are more of a warmer water fish. So their temperatures, you can find them all the way down to 58 degrees, all the way up to 81 degrees, but the peak water temperature for speckled trout is gonna be 73 to 79 degrees. Bait preferences for speckled trout are gonna be shrimp, mullet, or artificial lures. Personally, I have mostly caught speckled trout on artificial lures. Use like a paddle tail on a jig head, or a curly tailed grub on a jig head, used a spoon before and caught them. And our peak months for spotted sea trout are gonna be March to June and then September through November. Now for our bonus fish. First one is Spanish mackerel and we've been catching some of these. I just caught one of these the other day. When you see pods of bait fish jumping all over in the water, you're gonna be able to see, you'll see splashes of water. It just looks like little splashes everywhere. And if you look closer, there's bait fish jumping. Go get your casting rod, put a spoon on it, have it ready because you're gonna wanna start casting right into that. They are migratory, moving north in the spring and coming back in the fall. They just started coming back and I'm super excited. Their preferred water temperature is 63 to 80 degrees. Now, of course, I was catching them about 81 degrees the other day. So we're still in that kind of range, pretty close. But 67 degrees to 73, that's gonna be the peak water temperature for Spanish mackerel. You can use small fish and jigs and things like that, but I have most often caught them on like a, a spoon and I use an ounce or a three-fourths ounce, something that gives you enough weight because uh, you need to get that all the way out to the sandbar and then you're gonna be reeling that really fast in order to get their attention and have them chasing and biting. If it's jig, jig, pause, they're not gonna have any interest, reel it fast. So the peak months for Spanish mackerel are gonna be March to May and then September through November. 
Our next bonus fish is flounder, and one of my clients pulled in a flounder just a couple of months ago. You're gonna wanna look for places where when the water is calm and there's like a dip, those flounder like to hang out at the dip. But I did see one on our underwater footage also at a low impact beach recently down in Ormond Beach, and this flounder came right up next to the camera. I'll drop a video of that right here while I'm talking. They migrate to offshore waters in the winter and they come back in the spring. The water temperatures that you're gonna find flounder at is 65 to 78 degrees. So we got pretty big range there, but between 68 and 75 degrees is the peak water temperature for flounder. Flounder are gonna want the cut bait, the minnows and jigs. The peak fishing months on the beach for flounder are gonna be April through June and then October through December. The last bonus fish that I'm gonna share with you is sheep's head. And sheep's head is another one of those fish that's always here, but they rarely bite on the beach. I don't know how many people have caught a sheep's head on the beach. I caught one last year down at Playa Linda Beach, but I have seen tons of sheep's head on my underwater footage right at Varn Park, right at Flagler Beach, not far from the pier. They'll just go by in schools of three or four of them all the time. They're just not interested in the bait. So sheep's head is one of those fish that they're there, but getting them to bite is gonna be a different story. So sheep's head are gonna be more active in the winter and in the early spring. You're gonna see them between 60 to 75 degrees. So you got a big range there, but between 62 to 70, that's the peak of when you might be able to get them to bite. Bait preferences for sheep's head, and if you see their teeth, they have those funky looking teeth. I'll show you a picture right here. They really like crabs, sand fleas, fiddler crabs, shrimp. Barnacles, if you can get barnacles, scrape them off somewhere and put them on your hooks, you might have a better chance of catching those than if you just had shrimp. And then the peak months for catching sheep's head in the surf is December through March. Now we're gonna break down every month of the year and what fish you should be targeting based on the water temperature. And of course there's exceptions to the rule like we talked about. January, your target species are gonna be whiting, black drum, and sheep's head. So those cooler water temperatures are gonna make those fish more active. February, you're gonna be also targeting whiting, black drum, and sheep's head. It's still gonna be cold water. March is when pompano start coming back. So you're gonna be targeting pompano, redfish, and spotted sea trout. The warmer water is starting to warm up is gonna make those fish more active. April, we still got pompano. So you're gonna be targeting pompano. You're gonna be targeting bluefish. And you're gonna be also targeting that flounder. In May, you're gonna have still pompano running and a Spanish mackerel activity should be ramping up. In June, your target species are gonna be redfish, spotted sea trout, and flounder still yet. June's gonna bring you a good variety of fish. Keep in mind, you're still gonna have whiting, you're still gonna have black drum, you're still gonna have all of those fish that we talked about that were here all the time. Now, July is when fishing gets tough. July and August, I'm just gonna say this, this is shark fishing time. Sharks are more prevalent in the summer because it's their mating season. If you're going to be catching fish, you're going to want to reel them in fast because you may be reeling in half a fish or you might have a shark that just takes your whole bait, your, your whole fish off as its own bait. You may still catch some residential fish in the summer. This is July and August. It's pretty much the same. For the summer months, you're going to have it's gonna to be tougher. You may be catching those catfish, you may be catching small bait fish. You might be able to catch some mangrove snapper. We haven't talked about them, but we've been catching them here and there, um, really, really close to shore. We've mostly been catching those mangroves in the summertime. September is when the fall fishing starts to really ramp up. We've got the mullet starting to run in the surf. And so the redfish and the bluefish are gonna be chasing the mullet. The Spanish mackerel are gonna be chasing all those bait fish too. And then we also have the pompano run starting as the waters start to cool down and they start to migrate south from the Carolinas. So September and same in October, redfish, bluefish, flounder, you're still going to have that pompano run going on in October and into November. Fall is like the most fun time for fishing. Get all your work done in the summer, get everything ready for fall. And if you want to get stocked up with rigs from our store for the fall pompano run that's coming right around the corner, I'm going to put a link to our store in the description and it's also right here on the screen for you. So October, we've got the colder water temperatures cooling down. It's gonna bring those bluefish. It's gonna bring redfish even more prevalent as the water starts to cool down. You might even get the big bull reds in the surf. November is when we still have, we still got the pompano run going. We still got redfish in the surf. We got bluefish biting now, and we've got the whiting. They're getting more prevalent and they're getting bigger. And if you're watching this from the north and you're coming down to this area, why don't you book a beach fishing trip with me? It's gonna be so much fun and I'll get you on some of these fish that we're talking about. So last of 
of all, December, and keep watching because we're going to talk about the storms and how they affect the fishing. But in December, you've got whiting, you got sheep's head and black drum, all of those fish that uh, the bite picks up in the cooler months, those fish are going to be the ones that you're going to want to target in December. So there's a breakdown of every month of the year and what fish you should be targeting. You might want to put a bookmark on this video so you can come back to it later months of the year if you forget what we said and what we talked about. Now we're gonna talk about storms and hurricanes and how they can affect fishing. So we just had Hurricane Debbie go through and even though it didn't really hit our area, I can tell you that our fishing is going to be affected one way or the other. Either the fish are gonna be coming down here to escape all of the stuff that's going on up there. It's gonna change the water temperature. It's gonna change the salinity of the water. It's gonna change a lot of things. The barometer and everything is gonna be crazy. So either those fish are gonna be going into deeper waters offshore or they may get displaced. Fish can kind of sense when things are coming, so it's possible that some of these fish may have already started heading south. You know, like I said, fish cannot control their own body temperature, so they need to go where it's more comfortable for them. So as those waters cool down, it may push them further south. At least I'm hoping that that's what happens. I'm gonna be finding out in a couple days. Another thing with storms is we need to watch for upwellings. For us here on the East Coast, it's gonna happen when we have west winds coming over the shore and pushing the warm water back away from the shore. It's going to let the colder waters from underneath and the bottom coming up because that warm water is getting pushed back. It's going to cause the cooler nutrient-rich water to be coming up to the shore. It actually can make some really good fishing. Fish that would typically not be biting in the warmer water temperatures, but now that you all of a sudden have, I mean, I'm talking about drastic water temperature jumps, like from 85 down to like low 70s or high 60s just in a matter of a couple days we can see drastic water temperature changes because of like things like hurricanes and storms and things like that so keep an eye out for that keep paying attention to your apps and your water temperature watch the surf line water temperatures every single day before you're going to go out and see what is going on with the water and what you should be targeting so when a storm is coming i have heard a lot of people say this that right before a storm comes that fish the bite is just going to pick up and be on fire like i don't know what it is the the fish like really can detect something is getting ready to happen maybe it's atmospheric changes and all that like what's getting ready to happen but i'm just going to give you a little warning be careful when you're out there because as things shift quickly you don't want to be caught out there in the middle of a thunderstorm i did that once it was not fun but check those beaches a few days after if you have a really big storm it's going to change the salinity of the water if you have a lot of rain it's washing out a lot of debris. That's going to affect the fish bite because they're gonna be moving out to areas where they're more comfortable, probably gonna go deeper or into another area that's not been affected so much by that. But storms may produce more opportunities to catch fish that you would not, not normally catch at that time of the year or in that area. So when the storms pass and it's safe to go out, I'd say get out there because you never know what you're gonna catch. Thanks so much for watching this video. If it's been helpful to you, please push a like on this video and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet. Appreciate all your support, tight lines, and God bless.